Well now, if it isn't my good old friend, Dorian Gray. Or should I say, my good young friend, Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray is the subject of our first Halloween Fest movie that we are reviewing. Tonight's movie review, movie review is of The Picture of Dorian Gray, and it came out in 1945. It was an MGM movie, and it was originally a novel written by the great Oscar Wilde. Now, this movie was directed by the great director Albert Lewin, who I have reviewed one of his movies in the past. It was Pandora and The Flying Dutchman, which, perfect film, four out of four stars, highly recommend it. But of course, not during this time of year. This time of year, we're only considered with the scary things of life. He also directed The Moon and Sixpence, which has George Sanders, and that movie came out before Dorian Gray. Another perfect film. And I reference George Sanders because he's one of the main characters in tonight's review. Now, this movie stars Herd Hatfield. He plays, of course, my good friend, Dorian Gray. This story, as I said, it stars George Sanders. He plays Lord Henry Watton, but we shall call him Lord Henry. And also, we have a, a very young Angela Lansbury in this movie. She plays Sybil Vane. And it's interesting to note, she this was the same year that she came out with her very first movie, of course, Gaslight, one of this channel's favorite movies of all time. And also we have Lowell Gilmore, and he plays, another. he's another great actor, very underrated. He plays Basil Hallward, as we can see, he's talking to good Dorian in this wonderful scene, as you may watch play out during the review. And also we have a young Donna Reed, she plays uh, Basil's young daughter, Gladys Hallward. Now... This movie takes place during the late 1900s, foggy London, the perfect setting for starting out our Halloween Oktoberfest. Uh, every October I'm, I'm always thinking about, of course, we always reference back to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We think of the top hats, the capes, we think of cobblestone streets, we think of the fog of London. Well, that's exactly where we're getting here in the picture of Dorian Gray. Now the movie starts out interestingly, it starts out talking about Lord Henry. He's sort of this aristocratic man, a snob, I would say. And it starts out where Lord Henry is going to go see his good friend, Basil, who's a painter. Now when he goes to see Basil, he sees Basil is painting a mysterious painting of a man. And that man, of course, ends up being Dorian Gray. And it's mysterious at this point because we, we because Lord uh, Henry, he doesn't know who he is. And um, Basil, he won't tell him who, who uh, it takes a little bit to get it out of him. But he eventually says, oh, he's my good friend or not my good friend, but he's he's Dorian. Uh, he's Dorian Gray. And uh, Lord Henry says, oh, I think I've heard the name before. And then out of nowhere, they hear a piano playing and who is it none other than dorian and this is sort of when evil is introduced into dorian's life because i truly do think uh, that lord henry is an evil individual because he sort of mentors him in the way of uh, sin i would say because he's talking to dorian he's telling him you know, you need Dorian, you're young, you need to you need to you need to live and enjoy the good things in life. And to Lord Henry, the good things in life, of course, are women, sex, wine, parties. That's all Lord Henry lives for. And Dorian sort of he's he's easily manipulated and he agrees with Lord Henry. And Lord Henry sort of gives him this little spiel that the only thing that matters in life, Dorian, forget God, 
Forget being a good man. Forget family. Forget love. The only thing in life that matters is your youth. And Dorian, you can see it in his face. Dorian believes him. And Dorian says a prayer to himself. He, while he's being painted and looking at the painting, he makes a prayer he later confesses in the movie. He prays that the painting of him, and it shows him and it looks just like him, that the painting can grow older. The painting grows older with age, whereas Dorian will maintain his youth while the painting ages. And he prays in the presence of an old Egyptian relic. And you can see it's a cat of some sort, an Egyptian cat. And due to the presence of this cat being there and this prayer that Dorian makes, we will come to find that his prayer, his dark, evil prayer, comes to fruition. Now, we then cut scene to Dorian going out on the town. And he's a gentleman. He sort of gets whatever he wants in, in old London. And he has his top hat on, walking with his cape, white gloves, perfect setting, as I said. And he walks into a little, uh, a little pub. It's something called the Two Turtles. Of, you all can correct me in the comments. But for some reason, that name always sort of sticks with me, that it's something about turtles. And when he's in this pub, he listens to... A little song sung by Angela Lansbury her name is Sybil and you all will always remember this song because it's it'll get stuck in your head and it's called goodbye little yellow bird and it's it's a quaint little song and he's he's taken with it he's taken with her beauty as well and just about every night Dorian goes back to this pub to listen to to listen to Seibel sing this little tune. And Angela Lansbury, she was very beautiful at the time and very, very innocent. She's not, you know, she's not some sort of uh, pub whore. She doesn't like to meet with men. And she's, you know, she, she's respectable. And finally, one night, Dorian can't help himself. He wants to meet this young woman and he meets her and she sings a private song to him and uh, you can tell that he's in love with her. He's in love with her to the point where he wants to marry her. And he tells Lord Henry this, which is a grave mistake that he did. And after he tells Lord Henry, Lord Henry essentially says, okay, let's, you know, we'll enter, we'll, uh, humor you he doesn't say that to him but that's what he tells his good friend uh, basil that let's you know we both don't agree with this marriage but let's go see what the hype is about this young uh young singer in a pub uh, actress they call her so they go there and they listen to the song and of course uh basil's a good man and he says i was wrong she's great you need you should marry her but later Lord Henry basically tells, and as you can see, a wonderful scene playing out for you as I give the plot. I will try not to be distracted by, my, by the beauty of Dorian. And so Lord Henry, he tells Dorian, you know, what are you doing basically? Like, you, this isn't this isn't going to work and that you really, it's just momentarily love. Uh, you're going to move on with it. There's more to life than just woman, one woman. There's, you know, love doesn't exist. Just very cynical. And Dorian, of course, he believes Lord Henry. He thinks it over. And Dorian does just about the most evil thing because she... She comes over to his house, Seibel comes over to his house, and he basically is a jerk. And he says, Look, if you love me, stay the night with me. Which he's not being a gentleman at this point, and she knows it. He's just wanting to sleep with her. 
You know, they can say that in 1945, but we can infer that that's what's going to happen. And she says, she looks at him and says, I'm sorry, I can't do that, or something along those lines, and she walks off. And dramatically, Dorian starts playing the piano again, and this is a very dark scene, because she slowly walks back in, and she stays the night with him. And we can only assume that she gives herself likely a virgin she's as we can assume she gives herself to dorian that night and he does an awful thing basically the next day he writes her an awful letter saying it was a mistake uh, it was for pleasure i don't ever want to speak to you see you again and what what is causing him to be so evil and you could think of course lord henry's words helped but also this this Egyptian relic has to be controlling him and making him evil as well, in my opinion. And Dorian, you know, he does this and she's greatly depressed. You can see Angela Lansbury, you can see her eyes, uh, you can see Seibel's eyes when she reads the note and she's just crushed. It's great acting. And it cut scenes to Dorian and he's thinking things over and one thing to note is I do I don't always like narrators in films, but the narrator does work in this movie. It's it's great, and Dor- because we we need to know what Dorian's thinking, but without him just speaking out loud, and Dorian is thinking things over, as told by the narrator, and he thinks I do have a ch-, because we look at the painting. He's looking at the painting, and he can see that it's changed. We can see that his smile has sort of turned into an ugly little smirk of some sort. How did that happen? So Dorian, he thinks it's because of what I've done with Sywell. But I need to undo this. I need to be good. I need, I cannot let this painting, um, I, I cannot let this painting I cannot let this painting change due to my evil action. And so he wants to go see her. He wants to marry her. But Lord Henry shows up and tells him that she has killed herself. And Dorian is crushed by this news, but you wouldn't know because he doesn't cry or anything. In fact, what does our friend Dorian, our good friend Dorian, do that night? Of course, he he goes to the opera with Lord Henry. And this is when Lord Henry, or this is when Dorian truly starts to change. Not physically, but he, he changes into sort of an evil person. He lives for himself. Gluttony, lust, all the sins he lives for. And as time goes on, does, Dorian does not age. He looks as younger as ever. It's sort of like Keanu Reeves. It took him decades to sort of start showing age. And Dorian, Dorian with time, becomes a worse and worse person. And he's sort of the talk of London, you know. How, is, how does he still look as good as he does? And he's disturbed by hearing the gossip about him. But we've learned that Dorian has turned into such a bad person to where multiple people have killed themselves about him because he blackmails people. He's just a terrible human being. And women sort of are afraid of him. They, they love his handsomeness, but they're afraid of him. All but one woman, and that woman, of course, is Basil's daughter. Gladys, Gladys Hall, Hallward, and she loves him. She's loved him since she was a little girl, and we saw her as a little girl at the start of the movie, but now she's a grown woman, and she wants to marry our friend Dorian. Now, at this point, we sort of, and I want to note that an interesting parallel to another scary movie, in my opinion, which is Eyes Wide Shut because I sort of start noticing the wealthy, the extreme rich and wealthy elite, they use women, they use 
uh, people as pawns in their life for pleasure, for lust, and it's disgusting. And we eventually get to see Dorian's painting, as we saw in the scene earlier. Um, Basil, Basil doesn't, he does not want his daughter to marry um, Dorian. And he goes into his home and he says, I do not want, I do, I've heard awful things about you. I do not wish my daughter to marry you. And they go up to, and Dorian says, and he, no, actually Basil says, I have to see your soul. I don't know if you have a soul. And Dorian says, I'll show you my soul. And he lies to him. He says, well, I've written it down somewhere, but it's not written down. As you saw in the scene, they go up. There goes my flame. They go up stairs to the attic, which has been locked away to where no one can see the painting locked away. And the painting is horrid. It's disgusting. But that reflects the type of man that Dorian has been throughout his life and the age as well. And what does Dorian do once the painting is exposed? Because Basil knows it's his painting because he can see his signature down there and he sees his daughter's little signature below it. What does Dorian do? He murders him. He murders Basil with his blade, as you saw, in cold blood. And this is sort of when Dorian is thinking, you know, I'm going to... I've gone too far. There's a little bit of heartbeat in him. And <laughs> he's thinking, I'm going to change. And he writes a letter even to Gladys saying, you know, we cannot marry each other. I'm, this is the one good thing that I'm going to do in my life. I will not marry you. Let me bring this down so you can all see me a little bit. So. And he says that. But she wants to investigate because sort of her boyfriend at the time, uh, he, he wants to investigate uh, the situation. They want to go see the attic because he mentions the painting and Lord Henry remembers the painting. So they go to the attic and they discover that Dorian's already been there because Dorian went to the attic and he stabbed the painting through the heart killing himself essentially and we see the disgusting painting of Dorian is now human form in his face he's dead on the ground and the man in the painting is now the man dead on the ground and he's gross and the movie ends essentially there with Dorian dead now I want to talk about a few interesting facts about the movie the decayed Dorian painting was by Ivan Le Lorraine Laurent Albright. And that painting to this day is in the, the Art Institute of Chicago. I've always been very interested in uh, what happens to paintings from old classics such as Woman in the Window and countless other films. So I'm glad to hear that this painting is still out there. This painting is in Chicago. And the young Dorian painting was done by Henrique Medina. And very interestingly, that, that went to private auction in 2015, and it sold for $149,000. And I love that painting too, so it's good to hear that both paintings still exist. Now, what do you all think of Dorian? Was Dorian evil? Was he born that way? Who was he molded by? Was Dorian molded by Lord Henry? Or was Dorian corrupted by the Egyptian relic, the cat? Tell me, was he truly an evil person or was he just troubled by the circumstances surrounding him? I'll tell you one thing, Dorian Gray is no one's friend. He is not our friend. I've been calling him our friend this whole time, but I am terrified of him. 
and I hope that we shall never meet him ever. Thank you all for watching. And please lock your doors and lock your windows because there's no telling whether Dorian will be there. <laughs>